was in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. The part I played, Giles, was the font of all knowledge when it came to the world of the occult. And I have to say that Giles' fascination for the paranormal has left me a little curious. But to discover why, in a time of apparent scientific enlightenment, the supernatural should be as important to us today as it was hundreds of years ago. I'm going in search of a creature that taps into our basest instincts. I'm going deep into the lair of the werewolf. When I first began looking into werewolves, even though we had a werewolf as a regular character in Buffy, it dawned on me that outside of the man-moon-wolf scenario, I actually know nothing about them at all. In fact, I always thought the werewolves were something concocted for the movies rather than genuinely terrifying beasts. But as I really got into it, I came to realize just how widespread werewolves are in popular culture, not just in films, but even in the stories that my children used to read, from Red Riding Hood to Brothers Grimm. But when I came across the bizarre story of a murder in France, it soon became apparent that werewolves are much more than just the stuff of children's stories. This psychiatric report describes the startling case of a modern-day werewolf. In 1989, in the French city of Bordeaux, the violent death of a local man led police to uncover a story worthy of any horror writer. A 28-year-old man was arrested, and when questioned, did little to deny his part in the murder. But what set this case apart was the reason he gave for the killing. because the man claimed the murder happened just after he transformed into a werewolf. Si je regarde dans un miroir, je peux voir la transformation. Je sens des poils pousser partout sur moi. Mes dents commencent à pousser. Michel Benazek was a forensic psychiatrist who questioned the self-confessed werewolf. He believes he can turn into a werewolf, and when he does, he becomes very violent and wants to bite and hit people and drink their blood. Je satisfais mon désir en allant visiter des abattoirs, en buvant le sang des chevaux alors qu'il est encore chaud. Et je préfère le sang humain. So, how does a supposedly mythical creature become the key suspect in a modern-day murder case? I need to find out how the werewolf story all began. If you look through the history books, you find that werewolves are far from a recent creation. But frustratingly, many of the facts have been lost in the mists of time. But I have found one detailed account of a strange ritual dating back over 2,000 years. It's my first real clue to the origins of the werewolf legend. To start my journey, I'm going, well, actually, to the last place I'd expect to find a werewolf, Greece. I'm going to investigate a story of retribution, human sacrifice, and cannibalism. I've come to Greece to explore a 2,000-year-old account of werewolves. The account clearly details a ceremony of human sacrifice that culminated in a person transforming into a wolf. The legend even goes so far as to give an exact location for the site of the sacrificial altar, Mount Lycaon, deep in the heart of the Peloponnese, 
about 200 kilometers southwest of Athens. A group of American archaeologists from Pennsylvania University, led by Dr. David Romano, are planning an excavation here soon, which they hope will corroborate the stories of human sacrifice and their possible links to werewolves. So, werewolves. Uh, I must admit, I would never have connected werewolves with ancient Greece. Well, there are many ancient stories that link this place, Mount Lacan and the Sanctuary of Zeus, with the possibility of human sacrifice, and some of the stories involve werewolves. What are you hoping to find here? Well, we're hoping to find many things, but among them would be whether or not uh, the ancient Greeks actually sacrificed humans here on this altar, which is uh, 20, 25 meters higher up. Let's go and have a look. Wow. Sacrifice with a view. This is one of the trenches that was excavated in the early 20th century by Corinotes. He found the remains of bones, uh, which he analyzed and found to be uh, animal bones. Uh, but when we work here, we'd like to see if it's possible that the bones are human. And if they are human bones, how does that relate to werewolves? Well, the story that's recounted a number of times in antiquity is that if, if a human being ate of human flesh from a human sacrifice, then he would be turned into a werewolf for nine years. And it would take nine years of not eating human flesh for him to become human again. Otherwise, he stays as a wolf. That's the story. How would you say all these ancient myths found their way into popular culture? How did the werewolf make its way into the werewolf we know now? Well, the stories were told and retold in antiquity, and in fact, we have a summary of the story told to us by Augustine in the 4th or 5th century AD, in which he recounts these various aspects of um, the Lacan story. And uh, it may be from that date that Christianity picked up the story. There is little doubt that something strange went on here. Were there really werewolves here? Or were they simply a way for the ancient Greeks to discourage the practice of human sacrifice? Whatever the case, the story of Mount Lycaon shows just how far back the legend of the werewolf dates, just how early on they became a part of our culture. It appears that as soon as mankind began to write, stories about werewolves began to appear. Christian writers seem to have embraced the beast with a particular passion. There are references sprinkled throughout the Bible from Benjamin to Nebuchadnezzar. Here we are in Genesis, verse 27. Benjamin shall raven as a wolf. In the morning he shall devour the prey, and at night he shall divide the spoil. And in the 15th century, and Prasikismund brought together a council of theologians who finally decided that werewolves were a reality. I had asked Dr. Romano how werewolves went from being purely mythical creatures to becoming accepted as fact. He suggested that I travel to Paris to talk to historian Michel Mauger. When I started looking into werewolves, I thought, as I believe most people do, that werewolves, of all the monsters, was, was very much a, a Hollywood myth. But I believe that you have evidence that people were convinced transformation into a wolf was a reality. In fact, the image of the werewolf portrayed in films is not consistent with the old descriptions. There were indeed a number of trials based on the belief in the wolfman and the idea that a man could transform himself into a beast. Was there one werewolf trial that, that stands out? Here at the National Library, a manuscript of one of these trials has been preserved, that of Jean Grenier. C'était la nuit dernière, alors, que je gardais les moutons près de Tardivaux. L'un des moutons s'était égaré et était tombé dans un fossé. Marguerite Poirier, a companion of the young shepherd, said that she had been attacked by a wolf-like creature. Tout un bruit étrange venant de derrière le buisson. Ah, sale 
Wait. Wait. derrière et précipité au sol. D'abord, j'ai pensé que c'était un chien, alors je le donnais un coup de bâton. Tout ce que je pouvais faire, c'était le frapper encore et encore et le plus fort possible. Enfin, il a recoulé. Mais il ne n'est pas parti. Il a resté. Me regarder. Attendre. Pourquoi tu souris Tu es pour être tué Ce serait qu'à je sais qui t'a attaqué. Quoi C'était moi qui t'a attaqué. Et si tu n'avais pas où ce grand bâton, je t'aurais laissé bien plus que ces petits griffures. <rire> je t'aurais déchiré le cou quand je le fais avec cette petite fille autour de la crinière Grenier had a great deal to say for himself and told them at great length how he could transform himself into a wolf. The court records of the Grenier trial provide a compelling testimony to the events of the time. Jean Grenier, tu es accusé d'avoir attaqué Marguerite Poirier sous l'aspect d'un loup-garou et d'avoir aussi tué une autre jeune fille et un chien. Est-ce bien le cas Est-ce vrai As-tu commis ces actes répugnants Mais es-tu aussi sourd que débauché Je vous ai entendu. Eh bien alors réponds à ma question j'ai tué un chien. Mais les petites filles ont bien meilleur goût. Le chair est tendre et sucré. Leur sang est riche et chaud. They find bodies. Oui, les corps yes, the bodies found were those of young women who'd been killed. So Jean Grenier claimed that it was he, in the form of a wolf, who was responsible for these assaults. And indeed, showed them the spot close to a tree where one of the attacks was alleged to have occurred. Donc c'est bien ici qu'on a retrouvé le, les restes de, de Marie Richard. Oui. Pourtant, on a retrouvé sa robe. Vous tenez, pliée, intacte. Donc c'est pas... C'est pas un animal quelconque qui a fait ça. Mais bien un pouvoir surnaturel. C'est toi qui as fait ça Mais réponds-moi quand je te parle C'est toi qui as fait ça Imbécile the girl's dress was found intact. In his evidence, Jean Grenier says that one of his victims was wearing a black dress, and I quote, he drew blood without undoing the dress. And people testified that the dress had not been torn. This is something that happened in several werewolf trials, and the witch finder general, Comtoise Boguet, said this was a characteristic of werewolves. Jean, 
Tu es ici car tu as admis que tu pouvais te transformer en loup, mais que sous cette forme tu aurais tué une fille, dévoré un bébé et déchiqueté un chien. Explique. Explique à la cour comment il est possible que tu puisses te transformer en loup. Qu'on a lu Londres, dans son dernier quartier, j'ai un besoin très fort. Un besoin de rejoindre les loups. J'enduis mon corps ton potion. Je mets ma cape de loup. Et c'est là que je peux commencer à courir avec ma meute. Et que fais-tu avec ta meute Nous chassons, nous tuons, nous devons Alors, où as-tu trouvé cette potion et cette peau de loup C'était il y a quelques années. J'étais dans le bois. Chavel m'a demandé de brosser son cheval. Il me dit qu'il me payerait, me donnerait du vin. Quand j'avais fini de brosser son cheval. Jean Grenier explained that one day, while out in the forest, he had met a man whom he called the Forest Master. He had given him a tin of ointment and a wolf skin, and by donning this wolf skin, Jean Grenier could transform himself into an animal. m'a dit qu'il était le seigneur de la forêt et que j'étais son serviteur et que je saurais que faire quand l'heure arrive. Oh, mais enfin mon garçon, mon garçon, es-tu seulement conscient de ce que tu es en train de dire Amenez-le. So Jean Rene confessed to a number of heinous crimes and to being a werewolf. What punishment could he expect? It was easier to point the finger at human culprits than to tackle the devil. The devil couldn't be brought before a court of justice, but his accomplices in the form of witches and werewolves could be seized, tried and burnt at the stake. Il ne fait aucun doute que plusieurs meurtres sanguinaires ont eu lieu. En tenant compte des preuves indiscutables, il est clair que tu souffres de délires et d'illusions diaboliques. Alors la seule façon d'arrêter le diable, le malin, mon garçon, c'est la mort. Dans un cas comme le tien, il sera juste de faire une exception. Le besoin et le désespoir ont corrompu ton caractère. Et le diable a pu trouver en toi une proie facile. Afin de sauver ton âme, tu seras emmené dans un monastère. 
tu devras rester jusqu'à la fin de tes jours. Si tu devais essayer de t'échapper, tu serais rattrapé et pendu jusqu'à ce que mort s'en suive. Tu me comprends. So why were they so lenient with Jean Grenier? The judges felt it was too risky to sentence him to death. Rather, they chose to hand him over to the religious authorities, in this case the Franciscans, to raise him and rehabilitate him rather than condemn him to the stake. Was Jean Grenier the most notorious werewolf case in France? The Grenier affair with its strange, evil beast was not the last of its kind to occur in France. During the 18th century, the Gévaudan affair exploded with once again, according to witnesses, a weird and fantastic beast. Michel told me how the beast of Gévaudan terrorized the entire country of France during a three-year reign of carnage that saw hundreds of people brutally slaughtered. To hunt the beast down, I'm going to travel to the Massif Central region of France, to the scene of the most gruesome series of murders ever attributed to a werewolf. In order to find out more about the most devastating attack ever attributed to a werewolf, I've come to the quiet village of Saug to meet the local werewolf expert. Jean Richard. Jean Richard's fascination with the beast of Gévaudan started over 50 years ago, when his father used to tell him tales of the legendary creature. Since then, he's collected every scrap of documentation to try and unearth the truth behind the myth, and is now regarded as the world's greatest authority on the beast. To show me the extent of the beast's reign of terror, Jean Richard is taking me to the top of the highest tower in Sog. This is the region of Gévaudan that the, the killings took place. Over there is where the story took place. How did it all begin? It started on the 1st of July, 1764. That's when the beast killed its first victim. In three years, it killed at least a hundred people who were ripped apart and had their heads cut off. It was something truly terrible. Jean Richard told me that the beast's deadly reputation became so widespread throughout the Massif Central region of France that even the king, Louis XV, became involved. He offered a reward of 6,000 pounds. That's more than half a million pounds today for the body of the monster. The king even dispatched 56 of his best soldiers to the region. who in turn gathered 20,000 men to try and track the beast. Despite the near obliteration of the wolf population, the mysterious killings continued. So who did kill the beast? 
It was Jean Chastel. He came here to Notre Dame des Tours on a pilgrimage, where he melted three silver medals to make bullets. Mon père, veuillez bénir ces trois médailles d'argent pour nous délivrer de la bête qui hante le Gévaudan. According to Jean Richard, this story of Chastel melting medals to make his ammunition is the first written account of silver bullets being used against werewolves. Merci, mon père. Silver bullets? I, I thought that just happened in the movies. I mean, I thought According to tradition, you, you need to use blessed silver, silver bullets to kill a werewolf. Jean Chastel killed the beast on the 19th of June 1767 in saint de -Vair. He was waiting for the beast, and when he saw the beast, he took his rifle. Mon Dieu, qui dit ma main, bête, tu ne tueras plus. And that's the way the beast of Gévaudan died. Records of the time show how Chastel described the beast he'd killed as possessing peculiar feet, pointed ears, and a body completely covered with coarse brown hair. But an ill-advised trip to the king resulted in what remained of the beast being lost forever. Jean Chastel thought that if he took the beast to the king, then he would get a reward. He killed the beast on the 19th of June, and he didn't arrive until August, and by that time the beast was rotten and really stank. Apparently the king said, how dare you present me with such a foul object, bury it immediately. So they buried the creature in the garden of Versailles, and nothing was ever preserved of the beast. After all these years of studying the beast, what do you think killed all those people in Gévaudan? Ah. Ah. So Who knows? Maybe the answer is still out there. Jean Grenier, the beast of Gévaudan. There's no doubt that the people who witnessed these cases genuinely believed they'd seen something so extraordinary that it could only be explained as a werewolf. There are too many cases over too many years for it to simply be mass hysteria. But in this age of scientific enlightenment, is there perhaps a more rational way to explain the, the mystery of the werewolf? In order to try and uncover the truth, I'm going to get up close and personal with the beast at the heart of the legend. Du port According to Jean Richard, between 1740 and 1773, 2,000 wolves were killed in the region of Gévaudan. But today, Gévaudan plays home to the largest wolf population in France. People of Gévaudan were convinced that it was a werewolf that was at the heart of the killings. Could it simply have been a wolf? It couldn't have been wolves. Peasants in those days were used to seeing wolves, alive or dead. They knew how to recognize a wolf. And if wolves were so aggressive and dangerous, then children wouldn't have been allowed to go out on their own and look after sheep. They talked about a beast because they couldn't recognize the animal. So is there any scenario in which a wolf would attack a human being? A healthy wolf will never be aggressive to man. The only time would be if a wolf is suffering from rabies. Sylvain told me that wolves, like dogs, contract canine rabies, usually when other infected animals bite them. The symptoms of rabies vary dramatically. From dumb rabies, where wild wolves develop a drooping head, paralyzed hind limbs, and lose their fear of humans, to furious rabies, where an infected wolf will gnaw and bite its own limbs and become so aggressive it'll attack anything, including humans. 
So might rabies be a possible candidate as a, an explanation for the, the beast of Gévaudan? It is not possible that the beast of Gévaudan was one wolf or several wolves suffering from rabies during those three years. You must bear in mind that a beast suffering from rabies can only live for nine days and couldn't have survived for three years. But most of all, something that I think is really important is that none of the victims attacked by the beast developed symptoms of rabies. Well, if it wasn't rabid wolves, what... What might have killed all those people in Gévaudan? I think that the answer to this story lies within man. I am sure wolves are innocent in this case. So, if sightings of werewolves can't entirely be explained away as wolves, can science provide a human culprit? I've come back to Paris, to the De Pitron Medical Museum, to meet Professor Rodney Dauber. He's a trichologist, an expert in hair growth, and I'm hoping he'll throw some light on the possibility. Um, I'm trying to find out more about werewolves, uh, and so far, there isn't sufficient explanation by just blaming everything on wolves, per se, that keeps coming back to the human factor. Is there a set of circumstances under which humans could be involved? There's some reason that someone might have thought it was a human. Oh yes, many, many different ways of trying to explain it medically through humans, but the, the commonest one that's been done over hundreds of years is the people who are occasionally born with incredible excessive hair. We use this word hypertrichosis. These are pictures from the late 20th century. Hmm. This is a particular one from Guadalajara, an eight-year-old child. And you can imagine uh, a context yeah. uh, in a village or a country somewhere where that would be very much a werewolf phenomenon. Yeah. And you can note how much the head and neck in that particular type is much worse than the body. So would hypertrichosis have been more common, say, two or three hundred years ago? I think as it was seen, yes, there were probably a lot more congenital abnormalities that reached the light of day. Would there be any evidence of, of uh, hypertrichosis in, in the 1600s, 1700s? Going back through literature from that era, mm. very much so. But of course there's a very famous 16th century picture uh, showing that very clearly. Professor Dorber described how one of the earliest documented cases of hypertrichosis was Petrus Consalvus and his children, whose portrait became renowned throughout Europe. How do you think they would have viewed it then? Well, they'd have viewed these people as freaks. Hmm. And at that time, uh, they'd have been considered as from the devil. Now, Jean Grenier was described yes. as being uh, diminutive, uh, having brown skin. He kept saying that uh, that's, that was the wolf's coat that he had. Would that have any bearing on the hypertrichosis? Yes, it would fit with the complexity of the story where hypertrichosis mixes in with other faults in the body's development. Mm. People who are malnourished very frequently get browner skin. Uh, ah. And if you lose a lot of weight with malnourishment, it's almost the routine to end up with downy hair growing uh, all over the place. Bearing in mind, if you saw a lot of hair on a child, you'd find that very abnormal and fearsome in that context. So, limited diet in the 16th, 17th century might be a factor? Might well be, yes. Given all these scientific explanations for werewolves, would you say werewolves are a thing of the past? Not entirely, because we know there are many parts of the world where you can imagine the werewolf phenomenon possibly still existing because uh, congenital faults will still exist where there isn't modern medicine. Uh, and malnutrition still exists. Um, and if they have particular types of malnutrition uh, and they're not getting medical treatment, uh, it's still quite likely that there are people out there that, uh, that are considered in the same context as the werewolf story of two or three hundred years ago. And 
the strange murder case in Bordeaux that first prompted my investigation is a very real reminder that the threat from werewolves is not confined to the pages of history. Ah! I've come to meet Professor Michel Benezek, the forensic psychiatrist assigned to the case. It was in one of these houses. We, yes, one of the houses in the street. Ah! Ah! How did the story break? A badly injured man was brought to a hospital. He died a few hours later, and the hospital called the police. After the inquest, they arrested a 28-year-old man who was identified as the main suspect. And why were you brought in? I met that man because a colleague in one of the prisons in which I was responsible for criminal psychology told me that one of the inmates said that he was a werewolf. You're saying that the murder was committed by a werewolf? That's what he said. So, as police psychiatrist, you were brought in to interview the killer. What did he say? He said it was after a drinking session that a fight started and finished badly. So what was the first thing he said about becoming a wolf? He said to me that, like wolves, he was really attracted to blood. The problem is the sang. Dès que j'en vois, j'ai envie de l'avaler, de le boire. Je satisfais mon désir en allant visiter des abattoirs, en buvant le sang des chevaux alors qu'il est encore chaud. Mais je préfère le sang humain. Pas la piquette, hein. Ah, excellent, excellent. Alors, voyons voir. Ah. Alors, là, ce truc. Qu'est-ce que tu fais Aïe ah, Merde, ah. je me suis coupé. Ah, ah, ah bah, allez, elle est merde. con. Donc, le fumure. Mmh. J'ai du sang. Mmh. <rire> non, regarde, regarde, aussi, regarde, regarde. Non, mais arrête, toi, mais. Ah, écoute, calme-toi. C'est parce que y'a, mais non, t'aimes bien. Non, non, je te fais pas mal, là. Si, si, tu fais mal. Ah, tu... Embrasse-moi. Non. Ça va l'exciter, embrasse-moi. Quoi ah. Écoute, tu commences à me faire mal. Quoi Mais je te fais pas mal, je te caresse. Je te caresse la nuque, je te caresse la nuque. Mais qu'est-ce qu'il arrive pas Mais oui, mais là, peut-être pas envie d'être avec un connard pareil. Un connard The story of uh, transforming into a werewolf was a story he made up to avoid being charged with murder. Initially, 
I was wary about making a diagnosis, but after a long period of observation, I came to the conclusion that he was suffering from the condition of lycanthropy. Lycanthropy is the belief that you turn yourself into a wolf, or that the spirit of the wolf takes possession of your body. C'est comme si des, des fourmis grouillaient dans mes mains. Si je regarde dans un miroir, je peux voir la transformation. Mes yeux fixes, droit devant. Mes pupilles commencent à se dilater. Je sens des poils pousser partout sur moi. Mes dents commence à pousser. And whatever happened to the werewolf of Bordeaux? That's the big question. In 1989, the French city of Bordeaux witnessed the brutal death of a 52-year-old man. A local man confessed to the killing. But it was the reason he gave for committing the murder that made the case exceptional. Because in his statement, the man claimed he'd attacked the victim only after he'd transformed into a wolf. Michel Benezek was a police psychiatrist brought into question the modern day werewolf. It is here in this cell that the criminal sat during his sentencing. So what happened in the court case? Was he found guilty? Yes, he was condemned and from what I can remember he was sentenced to serve seven to ten years imprisonment. So if he had a psychiatric condition, was there a, a treatment that might have helped him? Of course, there are many treatments for such mental diseases, but the criminal always refused to take them throughout his time in the Bordeaux prison and until his release. Did he always maintain his belief that he was a werewolf? Yes. While he was in the prison, he was always convinced that he was a werewolf. What happened to him? He is now at large. So, out there, there's a convicted killer who believes he's a werewolf, loose on the streets. Yes, it's possible. When I first began thinking about werewolves, I had this image of big old hairy monsters that were more humorous than frightening. But as I've explored the history and the mythology surrounding werewolves, I've come to realize that that's because the werewolf legend has been hijacked by the movie industry. It seems the truth behind the, the werewolf myth is a complex mixture of brutality, suffering, intense isolation and torment, both from within and from external influences, the community, the authorities. The werewolf is very much the predator and the victim. The early French cases highlight the melancholic nature of the werewolf, where the accused were often outsiders, the homeless or the, uh, the desperate scavenging for food. In fact, it feels very much like the mob acts more like the wolf, hunting in the pack, stalking its defenseless prey. And the recent case in Bordeaux shows us that the, the werewolf threat is still very much alive closer to home than we think. Our animal instincts are much closer to the surface than we care to admit. All you have to do is look in someone's face when they get seriously angry. 
So perhaps it's not that surprising that the werewolf is so ingrained in our culture, especially when you realize how far its mythology dates back. Even here, in this beautiful medieval church, in the heart of the English countryside, there's an extraordinary reminder that the link between mankind and werewolves runs much deeper than any of us realize. This mural, dating back over 700 years, shows St. Hubert, the patron saint of hunters, tending to a strange half-man, half-beast-like creature, a monster that bears a striking resemblance to a werewolf. Perhaps werewolves are simply a reminder that there is a beast within us all, and a warning of what might happen if that beast is unleashed.